Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now I know it's been a long long time since I last released a video and my apologies for that. I have been so busy with work and I've just not been able to get out here and film some good content for you. A little bit of a lie, I did film some stuff but for some reason the audio didn't come out and I lost all that footage. It's all gone in the bin. It wasn't anything particularly interesting, it was just a little how to to get a little video out there so you weren't left in the dark but like I say that footage was no good and I couldn't use it so sorry about that. So what are we going to be doing today? On my bench here I have a few of these. Now this is a grade 304 stainless steel elbow which is commonly used on making exhaust manifolds so that's what we're doing today. So as well as these bends you need a few more things, obviously you need a head flange and you need a turbo flange, in my case this is a standard T3. I'm going to be running an external wastegate so I've got a flange for that and I've made a start on making the merge collector, so we'll be doing that first. Right, so now the reason why I have decided to make the manifold now is because it's always something that one, I think, is a bit of a rite of passage for someone who fabricates their own stuff for their car. It's something that I've always wanted to do, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Secondly, this is what I was intending on using first time round, and it is a cast manifold with a flip plate to run it upside down. I've also welded a mild steel T3 flange onto it, and I've bored a hole and put a wastegate fitting on there. Now I just mentioned that I had been in here and I was filming a couple of things which didn't go to plan and they were actually exhaust related parts. Now whilst I was under the car deciding where I was going to put things I was thinking if I'm going to be making a manifold the turbo is likely to be changing position, the downpipe is then going to need modification and I'll probably need to make a few changes to the exhaust to make that work so why not do this now. Now first things first, I need to make a merge collector and we started off with four pieces similar to this. I actually cleaned them up on a wire brush wheel on the bench grinder. I then made a fixture that goes in the bound saw to make the first diagonal cut and I've cut these at 15 degrees. And then on the second stage of this I've got an offset cut on there at 90 degrees because I've got four pipes being merged together so four times 90 is 360 degrees obviously and they will get pieced together now the reason why they're offset instead of all being the same is because a t3 flange is rectangular now here's a test piece that i started making earlier now these are cut at 90 degrees to one another but they are not offset so as you can see if that were completed then that would be a square or slightly rounded square um, which would be ideal if you were having a v-band flange on your turbo but like i say i've got a t3 flange with a rectangular outlet on it so i'm going to take these two pieces that have only had the one cut and put them in the bandsaw and uh, make the second cut now so here we are this is the fixture that i made to hold these tubes in place whilst I make the cuts on the bandsaw and you can see that is the orientation this pipe would have been first time round. Now I've got to rotate this 90 degrees and the way that I check the orientation is correct is I bring the saw blade down, hold it off there, get the square on it and then rotate this round. so that that tube is exactly square to the cutting blade. Just nip that up, double check it again just to make sure and that sits flush 
against the blade here and against this tube here. So that is ready to go. So there we go, I'll just check this with the square and the cut is exactly 90 degrees to the previous cut so that is absolutely perfect. So here are my merge collector pieces, all I've done is taken a die grinder to the inside just to take any burrs off and flatten these off on the bench sander and these bits fit together really really nicely. There's no daylight at all between the joints and they go like that needs to go together like this and it's quite tricky to do especially with a camera in between your hands and the workpiece it goes together something like that and obviously when once that's grinded up and all together nice and square then obviously I'm not able to get the fit up perfect just by holding it but there we go, and you can see that this shape here is kind of like this. Slightly smaller, which is absolutely fine, because I'm going to be cutting these down to suit the size of this. So, what I'll do is I'm going to tack these together in pairs, and then get ready to uh, fully weld it. and that'll be good to merge together. Awfully welded, it was a pain in the ass getting all the way down there. It's looking pretty good. All I've got to do now is I've got a pencil torch which hopefully I can get in there and fuse these internal joints together. So there you go, that is the inside fully welded. What I will end up doing is I'll run a flat wheel through there just to uh, tidy up all the edges. So the next thing I've got to do, obviously that is quite a small outlet on there. T3 is considerably larger. All I'm gonna do is gonna cut some height away from this until that fits um, on there properly. And there we go, I have chopped that off on the bandsaw and faced it up on the, uh, on the bench sander. And I thought I'd cut off a bit too much, but it is absolutely perfect, look. So you can just see these four corners and that lines up perfectly so really happy with that one thing that I probably should have done is cut that off before I tried to weld the inside of this because now that that aperture is so much larger I can see in there I can get in there that would have been a lot easier had I done that before I tried to weld it but overall I'm quite happy with how this is turning out and I'm really happy with how that fits on there. Looking in there, you can see there's a little bit of the flange that you can see on the back side, but die grinder, we'll sort that out. All right guys, it's a few days later. I can't remember where we got to in the previous clip, but I have cut the collector 
and you can see in there since the last video I've ground the welds internally to make that a little bit cleaner in there I've also in an attempt to do something properly for once made a purge block so this here will feed argon into the collector when I weld it and you can also see I've taken a die grinder to the inside of the flange just so that mates up perfectly with this end so what I'm going to do now is weld this to the flange <laughs> So that came out all right. Um, whilst I was welding, the camera ran out of uh, space on the memory card, and I did start to crack on with welding the inside of here. Now I don't know if you can see that. Just been manually pulsing on the inside to fusion and weld the uh, the inside, so I know that it's completely welded. Um, and I thought I'd stop and grab a memory card just so you can see this. Obviously when I've welded the outside I've closed off the ends of these runners and uh, with the purge block I was able to fully purge the inside with argon. Now that I am fusion welding the inside of this I obviously need to purge the outside of this here. So what I've got is my purge line here on a gas lens and uh, that is just pushed into the end of my purge line and clamped to uh, whatever I had handy and that sits at the same height as where I'm welding and all I'm doing is pulsing the torch manually with the foot pedal all the way around there so I've got a nice clean weld so I'm going to continue on and finish that on the inside perfect yep it's still hot so what I've done here is quickly made a jig to replicate the existing manifold to be honest I don't think I'm going to be able to match the existing position of the t3 flange just because this is very tight here this is a very compact manifold and if I grab this you can see that the runners here on the collector are going to intersect where the ports are on the head so uh, for example this is going to be around here and they would get in the way with these ports here so yeah I, uh, I thought I'd just quickly knock this up to see if it is at all possible but I don't think it's going to uh, it's going to be much help it would be nice to be able to get the turbo in the same position as before um, just because the downpipe is already made and so is the oil drain so um, if you look back on some of my old videos um, I, uh, I made a solid oil drain out of 25 mil aluminium pipe so um, I'll have to remake that if the turbo is not in the same position which like I say I don't think it will be so there we go that proves how insanely compact this manifold is because this flange here replicates the face of the head and this flange here replicates where the turbo would be so that is my collector bolted up to where the turbo would be in its normal position and I wouldn't even be able to get a flange in there um, like I say this this is not the manifold flange this would be the head itself so yeah definitely not replicating the existing position the only way that it could have been done is if I'd used bends to make the collector uh, and they come out this way so um, not doing that so yeah so I'm gonna have to remake this to put the turbo in a position that I do want.
been fucking around with this for ages now trying to get the turbo in a position that I'm happy with this is what I've come up with nice turbo brace there but yeah I think that is just about where it's got to be turbo is considerably higher than it was before this is only just pushed in um, well only just meets silicon hose so that'll have to be extended obviously the drain I'm gonna have to remake anyway I will also have to probably clearance the uh, the bonnet a bit for the compressor housing but it's still quite tight in there so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge getting this made and I can see why a lot of people don't do it so anyway I'll catch up with you tomorrow once I've had a bit of sleep